Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, welcome back to our 11 o'clock service. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's begin to pray. Let's ask God to move in this service right now as we magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to lift up our voices and exalt him. We're going to worship him in song. Let's let the power of the Holy Spirit begin to move in each and every one of us. If you're joining us online, why don't you begin to pray with us? Let's lift up our voices, church. Let's begin to magnify the Lord. Heavenly Father, we exalt you this morning, Jesus. God, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Lord, you are holy and mighty. You are great and greatly to be praised. You are a wonderful God. Jesus, you are above all. Can't stop. I can't stop. 
Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. If you're not standing, I'll ask for you to stand this morning. Go before the Lord in his book. We're going to open to the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 16 through 21. And as we're going there, I just want to thank my pastor once again for allowing the privilege to be here again on the uh, second week in a row, and it's uh, hopefully he's enjoying his vacation after his stay in Manchester and New Hampshire all week. I want to thank those who are joining us online, and I see a few new faces here, and appreciate your attendance and coming, and I, uh, I hope that this word is going to speak to you all today, and I, I do, I thank my wife for the support that she gives to me and for all the ministry that has helped support everything that we, we do. So Luke chapter 12, verses 16 through 21. Luke 12, 16. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there I will store all of my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many good goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose, things will, then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up his treasure for himself 
and is not rich toward God. And you may be seated this morning as I preach to you on loosen your grip. Loosen your grip. I don't know if anybody can relate to this, but as I was thinking about this message, I was thinking, has anybody, you know, if you've been cleaning or you've been working on something, maybe it's vi- uh, vehicles or, or cleaning something or whatnot, you ever drop something in a place where there's just enough room to where you can get your hand down inside? But when you go to reach your hand down in there, when you go to pull it out, you can't pull it out. The hole is just big enough for your hand. And maybe sometimes you're buried elbows deep in there. You, you, you get all scratched up on your arms. and you, you're, It's just frustrating. And then you reach what it is what, all the way down in there. And when you try to get it out, your grip is so tight on that item that you, that you lost or that you, you've been looking to grab that you don't want to let go of. You don't want to let go of it. And sometimes it just, it just has to stay there. You know, I was... I had heard something from somebody, and I had to look this up for myself. I guess, supposedly, there's a, there's a place, and it's true. There's a place, I don't know, not around here, obviously, but people trap monkeys. I know this is a little random. Bear with me, please. But the way that they do it is they take a coconut, and they hollow out the coconut, and they put food inside of there, but the hole is only small enough, only big enough, for the thing to reach its hand in and grab what it is. But as we know, when you reach your hand into somewhere just small enough and you tighten your grip, it will not release. It can't get its hand out of it because its hand is gripping on to whatever it is. And ultimately, that's what leads into being trapped or maybe even death from from whatever it is and, and whatever. And I was thinking to myself, I was thinking, you know, We can have such a tight grip on some things sometimes that we don't want to let go of. But what we don't realize is that if we just loosen our grip just a little bit, we'll be able to release our hand, per se. You know, uh, as I was looking and studying into this, them, them animals can be pretty greedy. You know, they're, they're pretty, I mean, I don't know if anybody has seen or, or read about them or whatnot, but they're pretty feisty. They're, they're, they don't want any, their, any of their mates or whatever to get what they have, and they're, they're pretty greedy. They're selfish. They're prideful, you know, and, uh, <clears throat> and I think that sometimes we can be the same way on certain things. We can, we can get to a point where we have such a tight grip on certain things, whether it be in the church, whether it be in our lives, whether it be... Where, wherever it may be, in our workplaces, in our homes, we can have such a tight grip on things that we don't want to let go of. Now, the funny thing is, is that it's not a physical sense that's keeping them there. It's all in their mind because they got their hand in there. They could get it out. But what they don't realize is if they just loosen their grip on what it is they're trying to hang on to, they would be able to get out from the situation that they are in. They're able to move forward from where they were, from where they're stuck in, in the trap. And I feel like sometimes we can get into situations like that within the church, whatever things in which we have such a tight hold of. You know, maybe God has given us things, maybe in the last months or years and whatnot, that we're hanging on to. We've got such a tight grip on, and that's what is actually keeping us back from moving out of certain situations and into new ones and helping us move forward. This man that we just read about, he had gained so much. His, it, wasn't, it wasn't just money. Sometimes we think about money, we can, we can hang on to that so much. But it wasn't so much of that in this. It was, a, it was his crop that he had, he had gotten so much of. But if you read and you look, you, you see that he didn't acknowledge God. He didn't say, thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, for what I have. He didn't acknowledge God at all. Actually, he said, I, I will, I will. I'll build bigger barns. I will do this. I will do that. He became greedy and selfish, like that little, like that little monkey that's trying to grab hold of something and not letting it go. You can see that he didn't, he, there was no mention of anybody else. There was no mention of, maybe I'll help somebody else with how much crop that I have. 
Maybe I'll, maybe I'll help somebody else and give this to somebody that's, that needs it. And I sit and I think about how much we, we have the Holy Spirit, the people of God who have been repented and baptized in Jesus' name and filled with his Holy Spirit. How much do we have of that that we don't give to others? And we sit and we can feel like, you know, what is it that's holding me back? But maybe, maybe really what it is is we're saying, you know, this is a good feeling for me. I'm going to have my own worship service in my own home. I'm going to do this by myself. This is what I'm going to do. And we're not sharing it with anybody else. We can end up just like this man who had built a bigger barn. We can, we can have our own relationship and, 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 and have our own feelings with God, but we don't want to share it with other people that need it. He was talking to himself, his ego, when he was saying that I will do this. He said soul. He was talking to himself. He wasn't talking to anybody else but himself. We can become selfish. And we can even become to, come to a point where we're not even acknowledging God. And we know that Proverbs 3, 6 says that we should acknowledge God in all of our ways. You see, I think it would be foolish for us to think that worldly possessions can satisfy, can give us spiritual satisfaction. Things that we accomplish in our lives and things that we do in our workplaces, things that we do maybe even in the church, we can get to a point where we can feel so good about everything that we do. We can feel so good about the accomplishments that we make. We can feel so good and that's what gives us the satisfaction. But if it's not really working toward what God has given us to work toward, then what are we doing with it? We're only satisfying ourselves. We're only talking to ourselves. We're talking to our egos. We're talking to the inside of us. We're not sharing it with anybody else. We're not doing what God really wants us to do if we're just, God has said, like Brother Zider said, go into all the world and teach them. We know. We may not know everything, but we have had the experience. We have had that born-again experience, but we can take that. We're not going to say, let's just, let's just hold it in. I'm going to build a bigger barn. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait. We can, we can take this to other people. And it would be foolish for us to think that worldly possessions could give us spiritual satisfaction. And I read a quote written by J.T. Davison. And the quote was, prosperity is like salt water. And again, I want to put the emphasis on that we, we come to mind thinking of just money, but it could be anything. It could be our emotional prosperity. It could be our spiritual prosperity. It could be our possessions in which we have. It could be our emotional prosperity. Whatever it may be, it could be money. But he said, prosperity is like salt water. When you drink it, it makes you thirstier. And you want more. And you want more. And every time you take a drink, you'll get thirstier. When in reality, what we need to be doing is Jesus should be like salt water. I know that sounds a little bit different. But the more we drink of him, the more we should get thirstier for him. The more we drink of him and the blood that has saved us and knowing what we have done when we have come into the church and knowing the sins that he has taken away from us, we should be able to get thirsty enough to go and to share that with somebody else. If you've been thirsty... Somebody else could be thirsty for God and just waiting for us to come and tell them and to witness to them. If they have come back into the church, just waiting for us to reach out and, and to ask them for that cup of coffee, to ask them for that Bible study. But sometimes we have to be willing to loosen the grip on some of the things in which we have been doing because we're not going to take everything that we have when we go. Not only physical things, but emotional, mental, spiritual things. We're not going to take it all when we go, so why don't we focus on things that we are going to take with us when we go? We know that when we get to heaven, we're going to see people in heaven. People are the things that we should be focusing on and seeing and understanding that we should be teaching them because they're the ones that we're going to see in heaven. Even our spouses, the Bible says that there's going to be no marriage in heaven. But that doesn't mean that you, that you shouldn't work with your spouse and, 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 and enable them to be able to work toward getting to heaven too. But we have to have an understanding that they may not, that we're not going to be married in heaven. But the things that we accumulate, what could that be? It could be money. It could be nice luxury vehicles. It could be 
church buildings. It could be music and songs. It could be whatever it may be. I don't know. But some of these things that we're holding on to can keep us back from moving forward. Does, just like that little monkey hanging on and trying to get his hand out. We, don't, we think that there's some sacred things that we can't let go of. There's sacred things that we shouldn't let go of in the church. But I think that God is trying to tell us over and over again that there's certain things that you're going to have to loosen your grip on. And whether or not that means that he's going to take them completely away or that just means that, you know what, wait for the opportunity. I'll show you what you need to do. I'll show you whether or not I want to take it away. But you have to be willing. You have to step out in faith and loosen your grip on the things in which you have so that I can show you where I need you to be. Some people are better at receiving all the time than they are at giving. So sometimes we can come in and we can sit and we can say it's all about me and the, the things in which I have going on, the things in which I have and how I need more and me, me, me. And then we turn into that man that is, we, eventually we've built up so much, we have so much about me, but we're not giving out. We have to analyze ourselves. And I believe that when we look at verse 21 in this, he says, so is he who lays up treasure for himself and not rich toward God. I want to be able to be rich toward God. There's a verse in the Bible that says, give and it will come back to you. So if you're worried about losing everything that you have, if you're worried about hanging on and, and just losing everything that you have, don't worry, God will give it back to you. In Matthew 26, there's a story in the Bible that this woman came to Jesus she had an alabaster flask. And if you read into this and you look into the story, I'm not going to get into the whole thing. But you'll realize that, that the disciples, they said, we could have sold this for 300 denarii. And when you look at how much money, how much currency that was in their day, that was almost up to a year's worth of allowance. And I don't know how big that, that precious oil was. I don't know how big that flask was. But obviously, it was something that this woman had worked for. She had worked so dearly for, for a year. Can you imagine? Take a minute and to imagine working for something for a full year. And this woman just went and poured it all out on Jesus. She gave every ounce of it to Jesus. She didn't just take a little bit in her hand and said, here you go, that's enough, you smell good. But she poured it out for Jesus, every ounce of what she had for him. And I think sometimes we're not willing to loosen our grip on things in life. We're not willing to lose almost everything that we have for Jesus. She didn't just keep some of it for herself, but instead she poured it all out to Jesus. And the same as the widow with two mites. She put in two mites, but that was all that she had. And Jesus said that she gave more than all those, even though it was more money for somebody else. She gave everything that she had to Jesus. And I believe that sometimes we can continue through life and we can say, well, I'm just going to give a little bit, but I want to save a little bit for myself. But Jesus is saying, you know, I don't know if you're understanding what I'm trying to tell you right now, but if you will give up, you must decrease so that I may increase in your life. And we need to be able to understand that Jesus is preparing us for the future. We need to be prepared for the future, loosening our grip on things that we no longer need to hold on tight for. We need to put off the old conduct of things, loosen our grip, and be renewed in the spirit of our mind because sometimes we can be so mind-locked in certain things. We can be, get to a place where we can just fall into something that we've been in for, into. Maybe it's worth thinking about things. Maybe it's a way that we do certain, certain things in our day-to-day -day lives but then we can't get out of it. We can't, we can't say, you know what, I can let go of that because we're stuck and our minds are stuck so tightly into certain things and we, we need to be renewed of our mind. I don't know how many times that I know that I've come across this and maybe God's trying to speak to me, but I believe that he wants us to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. In Acts chapter 5, there's a story of Ananias and Sapphira, his wife. And when the church had first started, they sold all that they had, but they kept a small little bit. And when they asked, when the disciples asked, is, is, is there something going on here? Is there something that you're keeping back? And they said, no. They lied to God. Can we be fallible enough to do that? 
Can we be foul enough to say, you know what, I'll just leave a little bit. That woman that poured all that oil, she could have said, I'm just going to keep a little bit for myself. And ultimately, ultimately what happened in this story is they both died. We don't know the day nor the hour when Jesus is going to come. We don't know the day or the hour when we just might pass on. But I wonder, are we keeping such a tight grip on certain things that we can't move forward into doing what God wants us to do? Jesus gave us the ultimate example. He gave up his grip on life. How many of us can sit here and say that I would be willing to to loosen my grip on life to do what Jesus had did for us. I believe that it's a big example. And I'm just going to read something quickly. I, you don't need to turn there. But in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 10, the Bible says, Now godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can, we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich... Fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith and their greediness, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. This man, who had built up everything that he had, it wasn't just money. There were other things. It was his crop that he had built up, but he had gotten greedy. He didn't want to share it with anybody. And he said, fool, your life is required. Now where is all of this going to go? Had you ever thought that you were going to give this to somebody else? Did you know that your time was going to be today? Now somebody else has got to deal with that. Oh, well. I believe if he wasn't so greedy, I don't know, the Bible doesn't give us any implications, but if he wasn't so greedy, do you think that he his time would have come? Do you think that maybe he could have helped somebody else out who was in need? There can only be one person that we could be, that God has been waiting for us to reach and to touch. What are we doing? What is it that we're doing? Again, verse 21 makes us analyze ourselves. So is he who lays up treasures for himself. And is not rich toward God. Before we close. One more story. A reference in Mark chapter 10. The story of the rich ruler. We can have great possessions. And Jesus said. This ruler came to Jesus and he said. What is it that I must do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus went down and he said. Well. You know, don't commit adultery and listen, listen to your father and your mother. And he, and he went down through the list and the man said, I've done all of that. But Jesus' response was, there's one thing you lack. Give up everything that you have. Sell everything that you have and give it to the poor. And you realize that this man turned around from Jesus and he walked away because he had great possessions. What are the things in which we are holding on to, in which we possess? Things, again, that may be not only physical things, but maybe emotional things that we just can't let go of. Spiritual things that we just can't let go of. Because we, don't think, we think that maybe if we let go of, we'll never, we'll never understand those things again. We'll never, we'll never be able to get in touch or in reach with those things again. I believe that God is trying to do something. And trying to tell us in this church something with all the things that we've been given. With the different churches that are going to start being started and whatnot. There's going to be some things, church, I'm here to tell you, that we're going to have to loosen our grip on. Because in order to be able to move forward, in order to build bigger, more churches, in order to reach more people, there's going to be certain things that we're going to have to loosen our grip on. And we're going to have to give it to God. And when he's ready to say, you know what? Well, I'm going to take that away from you. You have to have the faith to believe that he is going to do that. But maybe he'll just say, you know what, okay, tighten your grip back up. I'm not done with that yet. But we have to be willing and be open to what he has for us. Let's stand together. No matter how much we possess and accumulate here on the earth, it's not going to go. 
with us where we are going. No matter where we are going. It doesn't matter what direction. It's not going to be there. Again, we have to decrease so that he may increase. But I want to ask you something. The things in which you have and the things in which you possess, no matter what they are, what is it that they do for the kingdom of God? How is it that they're helping in the kingdom of God? The more I started thinking about this, I thought about, you know, I walked down into my basement and how many things that I have not touched in, in 15 years. And that's just, a, just an example of, you know what, sometimes I just need to loosen the grip on some of this. It's not doing me any good. Do we acknowledge God for the things that he does give to us? Do we truly say, you know, God, you have done this for me each and every day? Or do we say, you know what, I've done that. This is, uh, I've done this. Is there really any acknowledgement to God? And I think we need to analyze that today in prayer. When we come to prayer, come and ask God. Ask him if you have acknowledged him in every way for everything that you have given to him. Have we been faithful to God? Ask him, have, we been, have I been faithful to you so that you can take and loosen my grip on these things in which you have given, in which maybe I don't need anymore? I think there's going to be things that we're going to need to loosen our grip on to move forward. I believe, in my opinion, if we're going to have revival in the church, if we're going to see new people come in, but not only that, if we're going to have revival amongst our own selves here in the church, because that's what reviving is. You have to first be alive in order to be revived. So I believe in order to have revival, we have to come to God and we have to ask him, what, it is, what is it, God, that I need to loosen my grip on so that I can be able to move forward? What is it that I need to loosen my grip on so I can help a brother or sister in the church? What is it that I need to loosen my grip on in life in order to be able to move forward and then be able to trust God in faith to be able to move you forward in this time that we are living on? So I'm going to come and I'm going to ask you to pray right now. But I encourage you, don't pray that you can just keep everything that you have because it's good. Keep everything that you have because it's comfortable. Keep everything that you have because it's satisfying to you. If you are able and willing, step forward and come to the front. Sit down, pray wherever you want to, but I pray that God is able to give you the faith and the encouragement and to be able to give you the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within inside of you to be able to loosen the grip on the things in which we need to loosen the grip on now. And if not now, I guarantee you that there's going to be things in the future, things that are going to be coming up that God is going to want us to be able to loosen the grip on. And I don't think we're going to have an excuse to be able to say, God, you never told me that this was going to be happening. You never told me that I was going to have to let go of these certain things. But I believe that God is saying, you will need to let go of this. You will let you go of some of these things. If it's possessions, if it's great things that you have, you have to be willing for God to release you and let go of these things. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days, I've been held in your